Snicker, and Jelly Bean. Then me all... Well, here we are in sunny Switzerland. And here sitting on a little park bench in a sleepy Swiss village, right underneath the main flight path to Zurich Airport, is the wonderful Nicole Cook, Beijing gold medalist, of course, world champion, in fact, world champion many, many, many times. And uh, what, what are we doing in Switzerland? Well, I'm based here uh, through the racing season. I do my training here, and uh, then it's uh, perfect for me to be close to the races, basically close to the action for being a professional cyclist. But you're Welsh. Yes. Are you not missing the valleys? Yes. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you really are Welsh as well, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> you are a Welsh, <laughs> yeah. real Welsh girl. Yeah. Oh, it's uh, natural that to follow my dream in cycling, I need to go where cycling is strongest, and that's the mainland Europe. And so, yeah, have the, basically following, you know, my career in cycling. It's not the first time you've done this either. It's almost as if you've turned full circle, isn't it? Back to the beginning when you when you went off into Europe as a, as a young girl. Well, yeah, I uh, finished my levels, so I was 18 when uh, I joined my first professional team, uh, and yeah, went out to Italy. Didn't exactly know who I was going to be meeting. I just knew the name and had spoke once on the phone, I think, and communicated via faxes. At as it was at that time and yeah just sort of packed my bag and they met me at the airport and that's kind of how it started with uh, my first season racing in Italy and yeah it sort of went on from there. And that was 10 years ago and, and boy have you packed a lot in in 10 years hey can you believe it all? Uh, you were just saying weren't you that just now uh, Sometimes it's hard to believe you actually won that gold medal in, in Beijing in the torrential rain in that mad dash up the hill at yeah, the end there. It's uh, wonderful what I've achieved in my career so far. It, it, it's wonderful to be able to say that I've achieved what I set out to achieve. So, you know, that's very special and, you know, I'm very proud of what I've done. Um, but I guess when I started off when I was 18 or even in the years before that, when the idea of having a professional career in cycling first came, that I knew there'd be one heck of an adventure in front of me because it was like going into the unknown. Cycling in Great Britain wasn't very developed at the time. There was no racing on television. It was the years before um, you could actually follow the races live on television. So. Um, it was certainly a step into the unknown, but one that I was really excited about. Really yeah. Wanted to go for. Well, it's all gone rather well, and uh, I think in 2008, you're the first person ever to become Olympic and world champion in, in the space of, I was going to say in the space of a year, in the space of about six weeks, actually, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. In road racing, no one's ever done it before. It's uh, a very unique achievement and kind of goes to show how how hard the road racing is. It's, yeah. you know, one of the most demanding sports. Not only that, but I mean, you won an Olympic gold medal, which is which is the absolute pinnacle. Now, it's very hard to sort of keep yourself up to uh, to perform again to, to the extent of becoming world champion. Well, I've, I'm always... Well, it should be anyway for normal people. Yeah, I, I think for me it's always wanting to do my best and so I'm always judging it against myself have I given my best could I push myself more you know was that as as much as I could do because if I do my absolute best and I finish second or third or tenth then I know that okay that's as good as it gets and at the same time you know if I know that there's more that I could give you can't cheat yourself like that, you know it, and so for me it's about always giving my best and seeing where my potential lies. Yeah. Now you didn't know it at the time of course, but when you uh, went over that line in the pouring rain, in the shadow of the Great Wall of course, yeah. as we're in Beijing, and uh, to take that gold medal, you started a gold rush. Yeah. It was not all down to you that no. 19 gold medals were won, but you were number one. And it was a sensational games, wasn't it? Oh, it was an amazing 
Games. It was an amazing Olympics, and I really felt that there was such a great team spirit in the Great Britain camp, and particularly within the cycling team as well, going into Beijing, and that it really helped. And I think there was that spirit and that excitement which was sort of buzzing through the whole Great Britain team right from the start. As soon as we arrived, you could feel it. We were there, I think, a week before they actually competed, and yeah, it was a very special time, very special. So, what has happened since in the life of Nicole Cook? Because you, oh, we haven't disappeared, that, that's, that would be unfair to say, but yeah. uh, you've sort of had your trials and tribulations, that's for sure. Yeah, uh, well, after the 2008 season, uh, being ambitious like I am, I wanted to uh, create my own professional cycling team, because I think there's uh, still a lot of scope for development in women's cycling, so I created my cycling team. And to be honest, I put more effort into the team than my actual races in the 2009 season. And yeah, that was a big experience. I learned a lot and uh, yeah, kind of I gave another dimension to kind of my, my cycling career. Yeah, I, I, presumably it's fair to say it, it affected you on, on the road, on the bike. Um, and, and you also you, you, you got ill, didn't you, and injured and, yeah. and everything else? Well, uh, yes, I was, uh, you know, I took on quite a lot, being sort of... Is the phrase, bit off more than I can chew, does that, <laughs> yes. does that come to mind, perhaps? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so after kind of that season, I then kind of regrouped a bit and... Hey, you, yeah. you won't know unless you try, yeah? Exactly, yeah. Um, so then in 2010, I uh, signed for a professional team in Germany and basically we got an email three months before the season started. Oh, um, and the team sponsor has pulled out. So, ah. uh, well. Have you got any money? We're looking into solutions. So I rang up and was like, what's happened here? Um, you know, oh, well, yeah. The sponsor never signed a contract, um, and now he doesn't want to sign it, so we haven't got a, a sponsor. Ah, like, oh, okay, but I've got a contract with you, so you're going to honour that, and we're going to race? No. <laughs> so uh, that one ended up with the lawyers, and mm. I was with Axe team for last season, which... Not ideal. No, and again, like I said, it shows that there's a, you know, a lot of potential in the women's side of the sport of cycling for you know, things to be tightened up and you know, to be run you know, to a high standard. There are a lot of teams um, doing a very good job, but there's kind of some... We need a bit more support to actually uh, create that depth so that all the teams are run at a very high professional level. Despite yeah. all that, you still got quite close to the podium, didn't you? And uh, bear in mind, you had yeah, the like, worst preparation imaginable. Well, yeah, given, you, uh, you were close in the Commonwealth Games and the Worlds, weren't you? Yeah, given all that and um, that, that sort of got, you know, not the best start to the season, uh, yeah, I basically put my focus on the World Championships and really went for that. And yeah, nearly, nearly got it. It was really, really close. I was in a breakaway with. Uh, Judith Hart from Germany and um, yeah we were two of us away we had the bunch chasing it's always kind of fast and furious at the end of the road mm. races and we thought we could hold them off we were really going for it but no just in the last sort of meters we were past and I came in fourth so mm. kind of hugely disappointing to be so close but no, fourth is not a good time, place is it no that's it. Mm. That is how road racing is at times. But also, Nicole, after the yeah. year that you had, to know that you were, you know, a metre or two away from winning, yeah. must have been encouraging as well. Oh, yeah, and I don't... I've never doubted my uh, kind of strengths in, in that sense. I know uh, yeah, that I'm up there with you know, the top riders in the world and it's about getting everything together and that's what's so sort of intriguing and challenging about road racing because it's not just sort of you know 
like the 100 meters, it's yourself in your lane. You do your own race. Now, in the road racing, there's 180 people at the start, all psyched up, wanting to win, and, you know, off you, you know, the flag drops, and you've got, you know, 140 kilometers of drama to unfold. It's like a chess game, which, you know, starts off slowly, but then the attacks come and the teamwork comes into play and you're looking at how your rivals are and trying to judge who's strong, who's on a good day, who's on a bad day, uh, working out with your teammates what's the best strategy to take and then you sort of put your plan into action and all the time you're reacting and sort of trying to work out the best way of creating a winning situation for you out of, you know, any number of mm. scenarios that could unfold and yeah it's not a sort of one-on-one -on -one sport like tennis or perhaps like football where mm. you know it's one-on-one -on -one, one team against another or one person against another for us it's any number of between sort of five to 15 20 riders that have all got a chance and and they're all going to take their chances so yeah, okay. there's always lots involved. And you'll be going into the London Olympics as the defending Olympic champion. How good does that sound? Yeah, it's special. Yeah, there's, uh, it's going to be amazing. And yeah, defending champion into a home Olympics, not just an Olympics, yeah. which, yeah, is going to be amazing. And the route, now I know you, you, you've, you're not 100% sold on it, are you? But it will at least be good for the tourists. Yeah, it'll be a wonderful course, certainly. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, having seen how the Mall was decorated for the Royal Wedding a few weeks ago, it's going to be like that for the finale of the Olympic road race. So what better theatre or setting could you... Yeah. Cool. I mean, how yeah. good would that be? If you go around that bend into the mall and you're in a group, you never know, it, it's, that might just give it that extra inch. Well, I won't be thinking about it because you're so focused on the race and what's happening that those things don't enter your thoughts, but maybe subconsciously it'll be that little extra boost. Who Wonderful. Knows? Yeah. So you're fit, you're, I mean, you're looking good, you're looking yeah. fit. Uh, your confidence is back. Yeah. Yep. Um, maybe, in a funny sort of way, the sort of 2009, 2010 might have done you a bit of a favour in, in a funny way because it's, you know, you, you've, you've had a, a bit of a bit of a setback and that's probably focused your mind and uh, yeah, you're, well, not, you're not shattered, are you? No, I feel like I'm coming up this Olympics, you know, with, uh, you know, a very sort of fresh kind of perspective you know there's a lot of fire a lot of desire to, to go for it and to, you know aim for that gold again and yeah I think uh, putting the focus you know 100% on that on that goal you know, it, it's the right time to go for it mm. yeah well it'd be rude not to then wouldn't it yes. <laughs> all right Nicole well listen we wish you all the very best uh, for this year Thanks. and especially for next year Going down that mow in first place would be lovely. Yeah. And would you be the first gold medalist again if you did it? Oh, well, I think it's on the second day of competition, so there'll be competitions on the right. first. I think the men's road race is on the Saturday, so potentially our guys might be able to yeah. get on the podium. But if not, win. Yeah, obviously over to you. ladies will be <laughs> doing our best. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Right. See you soon. But I'm the last of the red hot mama. I'm getting hotter all the time.